So I've been using Fedora now for quite a while, well over a month, and I've made several videos about it in that time, and I don't really want to talk about my experience too much in this video. Really what I want to talk about today is to answer the question, is Fedora good for new users? Now, I've talked about how Fedora is becoming more and more popular in the past, and how it's kind of overtaking Ubuntu as the main Linux distro, if we can ever say there is a main Linux distro, which we really can't, but it seems to be over the last two years or so that Fedora has become more and more popular, especially amongst new users. So what I wanted to talk about today was, is that a good thing? Is Fedora really that great for new users? And now that I've used Fedora for quite a long period of time, I can have more insight into which way we should answer that question. So the first thing we need to answer when we're thinking about this is what makes a good beginner's Linux distribution. And I've talked about this before, but really the main things that make up a good beginner's distro all have to do with installation and support. When it comes down to everything else, it doesn't really matter because most of that stuff is going to be documented. So when you talk about like package managers or installing something from a package store or something like that, all that stuff is either intuitive or is fairly well documented no matter what distribution you're going to be using unless you're like talking about like Gen 2 or something like that. And even they have documentation, it's just more technical, you know what I mean? So let's look at Fedora when it comes to those two main points, installation and support. The first one is going to be where Fedora really kind of falls off because the Fedora installer, which is called Anaconda, is not the greatest installer out there. It's not the most intuitive. In fact, it's quite dated. And there are some peculiarities when it comes to choosing like the partition or the drive that you're going to be installing on that aren't necessarily the most intuitive thing for new users. And on top of that is if the new user has installed Linux before. So let's just say they've done a few distro hops. So they've installed Ubuntu, they've installed Manjaro or something like that. So they've experienced the Ubiquity installer and they've experienced the Calamari's installer. Both of those, while different, are basically the same workflow. You begin at the beginning, you end at the end. You know what I mean? They basically have the same path that you follow. When it comes to Fedora, the path is completely different. And it's not necessarily that it's bad, it's just because it's different, it's going to throw some people off. Add on top of that the peculiarities that I talked about earlier, and the installer ne isn't necessarily the best for new users. And they are working on that, but it's still something that you kind of have to keep in mind. The second thing that I said was important is support. And support is where Fedora kind of has a mixed bag, because it definitely does not have the breadth of popularity that Ubuntu has. So if you Google how to do something on Linux, chances are the tutorial articles that are going to come up are going to focus on telling you how to do that, but they're going to tell you how to do it on Ubuntu. So everyone's probably had this experience. If you use Linux for any amount of time, you'll know that you've Googled something to learn how to do something, and they have tell you to sudo apt install something even though you just asked how to do it on Linux. They're assuming that you're using Ubuntu because Ubuntu is the most popular distro. So Fedora doesn't really have that cache when it comes to literature on the internet and published articles from people on the internet. It doesn't mean that that stuff isn't out there, it's just not as plentiful as it is for Ubuntu. Outside of that, the support in like the community forums and online in other places is fairly robust. It's not probably as good as Ubuntu's is, but it's good enough for most people. And the one thing I found is that Ubuntu and Fedora, their communities are basically comparable when it comes to friendliness. I have had some more prickly people when it comes to Fedora, but for the most part, the people in the Fedora camp are just as happy to help new users as the ones in the Ubuntu camp. It's not universal, but it seems to be that way for me. So those are the two most important things when it comes to deciding whether or not a distribution is good for new users. And Fedora is very much a mixed bag when it comes to it. The installer, I would say, is not as intuitive and as good for new users as something like Ubuntu or Elementary OS or Manjaro, something like that. The community, on the other hand, is just as good 
uh, I would argue, for the most part, as Ubuntu or any of those other distros. So another thing that is important that I didn't really talk about earlier is stability. And the reason why I didn't talk about it is because it's very, when you talk about stability, it is very much a thing that you have to take into account on a person by person basis. What's stable for me might not be stable for you. I know many people who have tried Fedora and could not get it to work on their machines at all. And it was a horrible experience for them. I've known people who are like me who've had a wonderful experience and have no, have had no problems. And you can just replace that distro name with any other. So I know people who have had excellent experiences with Arch. I know people who can't install it for the life of them. I know people who can't stand Ubuntu because it won't run on their machines and it's not stable or it always crashes or something. And I know people who have run Ubuntu for 20 years. So really, when it comes to stability, it's much harder to say because it's going to very much depend on several factors. One, that person's hardware. How is it going to interact with things like Wayland? So if they're going to use the standard Fedora ISO, they'll get GNOME and Wayland, and that not and that might not necessarily be great for people who have NVIDIA cards. So that's going to be a factor. Also, outside of hardware, it's going to be some kind of level of expertise, because things are going to break a little bit more often on Fedora than they will on Ubuntu, simply because you're going to be dealing with slightly newer packages. It's not like Arch, where things might break even more often, but it's still something that you're going to have to keep in mind, because Fedora does push out packages a lot faster than Ubuntu or Debian or Mint or something like that. So when it comes to stability in terms of like packages that break your system and things that might go wrong, it's going to really kind of depend on what the problem solving skills of the new user is. And that's where support comes in. And I found that a lot of times the problems that I have had on Fedora have been easily solved with just a Google or hopping into a Discord chat room or something like that. It's been fairly easy to solve. But... All that being said, I'm not a new user anymore. I consider myself a noob when it comes to Linux, but I'm not really a new user. So I can't really take my experience and say, hey, this is how it's going to be for brand new Linux user named Joe. You know what I mean? So that's definitely something that we'd have to kind of ask other people about. We also have to talk a little bit about Wayland itself, because Wayland is definitely one of those things where it's either ready for you or it's not ready for you. And... Like I said earlier, that's really going to depend on whether or not you're using an NVIDIA card. Because if you are using an NVIDIA card, chances are you're not going to have a very good experience if you use Fedora. Or at least if you use the Wayland version of Fedora that comes with the GNOME package. Right? And the thing is, is that is default. And it's not out there for new users. So if you are a new user and you've chosen Fedora as your first distro or maybe your second distro, whatever, and you've not done a lot of research, and you install Fedora, you probably will get it installed, and you get to the point where you know you start tinkering, tinkering around. While it may run, you may experience these issues that crop up because of the compatibility issues between NVIDIA and Wayland. And you may not know what's going on there. Now, it is a good opportunity to Google it and figure it out, but when it comes to new users, at least in my experience, a lot of people, when they discover a problem when they're a new user, they're not going to solve it right away. They may Google it. If it looks like something that they might be able to fix, then they will attempt to fix it, but most people will just hop again. You know what I mean? I know I was like that when I first started, when I experienced a problem, I didn't even attempt to fix it. I just hopped. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people are like that. Not necessarily everybody, but again, I think a lot of people are. And that first experience with NVIDIA and Wayland may turn a lot of people away. So at the end of the day, to answer the big question, is Fedora good for new users? It's kind of a mixed bag. I would still probably recommend something like Mint or Zorin or something like that, even stock Ubuntu would probably be better for new users simply because there's this breadth of information online dedicated to Ubuntu based distros and that stuff is just kind of can't be beat by any other distro including Fedora. It may get there someday but it's not there yet. So I would probably still recommend those distros other than Fedora but I would also say this. If a new user were to land on Fedora, I don't think that they would be sorry for it unless they met those hardware problems that I talked about. 
if they got past those, I think that a lot of people, no matter their le skill level on Linux, would have a fantastic time with Fedora. I know I have, but again, it's going to be very much dependent on those things we talked about. So if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'm sure I could ramble on about this com this topic for a little while longer, but I think we've talked about it for enough today. Uh, anyways, comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description just below the like button. If you could hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. It does seriously help the channel. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. I truly do appreciate it. If you do support me on YouTube, just so you know, I never get emails from YouTube about new members. So if I've forgotten you and I haven't added you to the credits or whatever, I apologize for that. I try to check it once or twice a week, but sometimes I miss you. So if, if I have missed you, give me an email. I'll get that fixed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I'll see you tomorrow.